Hello and welcome to a very special world exclusive of Animal Watch, where we are introducing to you today the miniature wolf dog. Yes, you heard it right, the miniature wolf dog. So I was blown away while talking to biologist and geneticist Mark Klemperer, the guy behind the North American Indian wolf dog, otherwise known as the North Aid wolf dog. If you'd like to know more about these fantastic breeds, then click the info boxes that are going to be popping up in the top corner. Now on Eve and Winston, the two North Aid wolf dogs, which I filmed with earlier this year. So Mark Klemperer informs me that he had created a miniature wolf dog, one that looks and acts exactly like one of the large size wolf dogs, but shrunk down to much more manageable proportions, proportions that would easily mesh into a family unit, be easier to feed, be easier to walk, and probably easier around children as well. So I know you're just as excited to find out about these miniature wolf dogs as I am to introduce them to you. So I had a little catch up with Mark Klemperer, the creator behind these amazing dogs, just to find out exactly what this was all about. <laughs> I've always been a fan of uh, small dogs, obviously as well as big dogs. And I, starting about 30 years ago, just shortly after I began the North American Indian Dog Project, I wanted, decided I wanted to try to develop something similar but much smaller. The adult weight and height of the current uh, miniature North American Indian dogs is about, it's going to be about 10 kilograms, 22 pounds. The height, they'll be lean and tall like the large version and I'd say maybe up to about 18 inches, 20 inches at the shoulder, very lean. Now I bet you're all really curious to find out just what breeds Mark has put into these incredible wolf dogs in order to create these shrunken down wolfy appearances. Well, world exclusive here, Mark Klemperer is about to tell you. So I have two sources of genetics for smaller size that I've utilized. Um, the wild canid um, appearance is, and genetics is coming from Canis latrans, or the coyote, which is a much smaller animal than the gray wolf. A coyote, a true uh, coyote, would be approximately um, 10 kilograms, maybe a couple kilograms more, and they look in appearance very similar to a very small, uh, slender European gray wolf, but with larger ears and a much sharper, longer muzzle. Um, the, the other source of small genetics is small spitz type uh, purebred dogs. And what I've got is something that will converge uh, to look more, uh, blending those two genetic uh, sources, it could be something that looks quite canis lupus. Um, that uh, combination, if I select correctly, I can bring that look to, you know, a very canis lupus look with a small size. I wanted to know if the temperament would be exactly the same as the large size North Aid wolf dog, and this is what he said. So far, um, they're very similar in temperament, uh, very affectionate, uh, just love cuddle sessions, love to be sprawled out and uh, touched by humans, um, but also very active and playful, very athletic. I was also very curious to find out if training these small sized wolf dogs would be exactly the same as a large sized one. Um, very similar, but what I've noticed so far is that the little guys are, at least the, this first uh, group, are very um, adaptable, much easier to socialize, um, very trainable too. Now, is there a real demand for these wolf dogs? 
Well, this is what Mark said. I um, basically over the years, uh, that the answer is yes. Um, I've had many people say that they would love to have a, a smaller version of a wolf dog or North American Indian dog. Um, some people have said, look, I've loved big dogs my whole life, but I'm getting older. Just simply lifting, uh, in the case of an emergency, for example, having to lift a 100-pound animal would be much more pro problematic than a 20-pound animal. Now, even though they're very small, would they have the same energy levels as a large-sized wolf dog? The, the energy level is certainly high, but again, like this little one right here, they also you know, could be very passive and cuddly for long periods. Um, but yes, they're, they're high energy, um, they are athletic, they're escape artists, they're intelligent. Uh, they will require a secure outdoor containment area, and they will require supervision in the house because they're very intelligent, they will probably manipulate objects and uh, in a way that could damage them that you wouldn't want them to if you're not there to say no. And another question I'm sure you're dying to know is how will these wolf dogs be around children? Uh, yes, uh, they seem to be very good around children so far. I've had, uh, I've had um, a lot of interaction between these, this first litter and kids of all ages and adults. There seems to be no uh, tendency to snap or be aggressive. They're gentle and respectful of humans. Uh, so far, so good. Um, obviously, all canines should be supervised at all times when interacting with uh, children, especially young children. Also, I asked Mark if they would have the same sort of prey drive as a large-sized wolf dog. Um, the, the prey drive of the North American Indian dog isn't really higher than many uh, domestic breeds. However, it's there. Um, all canines are predators. Um, these little ones will be the same. They uh, will need to be watched around other small animals. Um, they will uh, definitely have a tendency to uh, be territorial with uh, canines of the same gender. Um, if they're going to be kept in a household with small animals, or say cats for example, uh, socialization should be done from an early age and supervision should be uh, given at all times. So what type of owner would these small sized wolf dogs be suitable for? Would they be suitable for somebody who likes a lap dog or would you still have to be an active type of person? They um, are going to need both. They really need cuddle time and uh, they're very affectionate. Um, they want quiet time with humans, um, but they also need a lot of exercise and play. Uh, they're going to want to want to need interaction with other canines, uh, you know, be able to play with a variety of toys, have a place to run. Uh, they need both. I was also very curious to, to ask Mark about the future of this breed, where he's taking it, where he can see things going. And this is what he told me. I would like to bring the size down eventually um, from the 10 kilogram range to something around 5 kilograms. And that will involve incorporating smaller Spitz type dogs. I also would like to expand the color range uh, from the typical uh, wolf sable gray to some born white animals, some that are black, and some that have a rich uh, orange red, sort of similar to a red fox. I would just like to emphasize that, uh, as with um, the large uh, North American Indian dog, um, these animals should be, the ones meant to be companions, should be spayed or neutered at an early age. Um, they should be given as much training and guidance as possible to make them good canine citizens. They absolutely must have secure containment that is escape proof outdoors and supervision indoors. And basically, um, they, you know, they're not going to be the most obedient animal, but they're very intelligent. So don't give them situations where they're going to get themselves in trouble. Give them the guidance and protection they need and they'll be very good companions. So as you can see, a really fascinating new breed emerging by the mixing of coyotes and small sized spitz dogs, which I'm sure has not been done before. Now, as Mark has explained to you, he's right at the beginning of his breeding program. So the dogs that you've actually seen in the film today are going to be a lot larger than the ones that he wants to end up with finally, which will be shrunk down to even smaller proportions. 
Now, domestic coyotes are incredibly affectionate animals, as are domestic wolves. But at the end of the day, they are wild animals, even if they have become domesticated. And as Mark explained in the video, they are not going to become lap dogs. They are going to be for owners that are going to have to be prepared for things like prey drive, escaping, jumping, high energy levels and things like that. Now, I'd be very excited to find out how this breed progresses and a big thank you to Mark Klemperer for taking the time to talk to me about these amazing animals. Now, if you enjoyed this episode of Animal Watch, please remember to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button. And remember to click the alarm bell that is next to the subscribe button and then you will be notified every time I make an upload. And remember to tune in to Animal Watch that brings you fantastic episodes on wolves, wolf dogs, canids, animal rescue, wildlife and conservation. Bye for now. Hey. You can say bye, Kumi. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>